I'm the kind of guy who has strong convictions and holds to them. I'm firm and determined. You won't change your dogma for anything. You're stubborn and obstinate. You're a pig-headed fool. Is there any difference between us? I'm an open-minded guy, and there are many opinions I've reconsidered after deep thought. You're just a flake and a flip-flop. You're always changing your mind and going back on your word. Is there any difference between us? In both cases, the factual answer is no. There is no difference between someone who is determined and someone who is pig-headed and someone who flip-flops and someone who is open-minded. In both of those examples, I utilized Russell conjugations to puff myself up and put you down, even though, factually, we could literally be describing the same person, just with words with different emotions. How about this? Is the U.S. government investing in an important defense initiative, or did we just start another war? If Hamas kills civilians, is it terrorism or resistance? Of course, the U.S. and our allies always regret any collateral damage that might unfortunately occur during our important defense campaigns. Is it important to speak respectfully? Or is political correctness the downfall of our society? You might think that any of these constructions could be accurate depending on the context, but you could use either one to describe the exact same thing. The only difference is how you feel about it. For as long as we know, governments, politicians, Media sources and regular people have used Russell conjugations to adjust how people feel about certain things. The rise of the internet and social media have made Russell conjugations even more powerful. With emotionally charged language everywhere, how are we even going to begin to interpret reality? For over a year, I have been developing a fine-tuned AI model alongside an online tool to highlight Russell conjugations in text automatically and provide their emotionally opposite factual equivalents. And it's finally almost ready to be released to the public. I first learned about Russell conjugations over five years ago on Eric Weinstein's podcast, The Portal. In 2017, he wrote a short essay to answer the Edge Foundation's annual question, which that year was, what scientific term or concept ought to be more widely known? The most important thing to understand is that most words and phrases have two separate attributes. The literal factual content it describes and the emotional value assigned to it. If you look in a thesaurus, you'll see synonyms for words based mostly on their factual content. But most of the time, the emotional content is ignored. As Eric Weinstein described it, Russell conjugations are those phrases which are factual synonyms, but emotional antonyms. Completely different emotional descriptions of the exact same things and they're all around us. The concept was first popularly demonstrated by Bertrand Russell on a British radio program in 1948, yet despite the fact that multiple people have described this phenomenon, and pollsters, politicians, and companies are creating and leveraging Russell conjugations every day to emotionally support their goals, it has remained a mostly unknown concept and we still think positively of the determined protagonist and negatively of the pig-headed fool, even if their stubbornness is exactly the same. We hate big tech, but we like digital innovators. The deep state is bad, but everyone has a soft spot for our devoted public servants. People who understand how language works are utilizing Russell conjugations every single day. But very few people know that they exist, much less how to decode them. 
This is what I wanted to change. Despite the conciseness of the idea, it's harder than you might think to get a fine-tuned ChatGPT model to properly understand the concept, identify examples in text, and provide proper alternative Russell conjugations. While once you see a good description of the concept and some examples in action, it's pretty easy to understand the basic idea of what a Russell conjugation is, and I hope at this point in the video I have given you at least that, it's a lot harder to parse through text and uphold a consistent definition, especially when more complex rhetorical techniques are being used at the same time. There are a lot of gray areas in exact definitions of positive and negative, and a lot of things that people have described as Russell conjugations in the past don't really adhere to a consistent definition and are more appropriately described as weasel words, something I have also been trying to train AI to identify as well. Some words, like great, incredible, awful, and terrible, are just emotion, and even though they do communicate biased perspectives, they don't really fit into the concept of Russell conjugation, as much as the earlier versions of my model might have wanted them to. I could probably make an hours-long video describing all the trials and confusion that went into creating these models. And maybe I will. But now, the definitions are mostly consistent, I've greatly increased the size of my training set, and I am now in possession of an AI model that can identify and find alternatives to Russell conjugations in text. Mostly. Sometimes it highlights things that don't really make sense, and sometimes it provides alternatives that aren't actually emotionally different or are just completely grammatically incorrect in context. It can be difficult for it to parse emotion and tone, and it can still miss more subtle uses of Russell conjugations in the world, which are still really important and valuable to see the other sides of. Right now, I'm in the process of doubling the size of my training set again. While it might never be perfect, and I will eventually have to accept some level of subpar performance, I think it has to do just a little bit better before being released to the entire world. For now, you can visit russellconjugations.com to learn more about the concept and see some specific text examples with Russell conjugations highlighted. I have also given access to the current version of the model to a few specific individuals, and hopefully you'll start seeing some more interesting and important examples of texts with Russell conjugations highlighted in your social media feeds. The goal right now is for everyone to become aware of the concept. To see just how many words and phrases in regular use can be given completely different emotional meanings with the exact same facts. There are other things I'd like to be able to do with the model in the future, but for now, with my resources, this is the goal. And I think that identifying and sharing examples with this website will help achieve it. I hope you'll visit the website, which is linked down below, and share this with the people you know. Stay tuned for updates to the model, and comment below or reach out to me in some other way with text examples that you think would be interesting or important to see illuminated. I'm still working on the training sets for the new model, and I want to maximize its performance as much as possible. I appreciate any help you can provide. Thank you.